Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch Want, and thanks for logging on. Today we are looking at the standard bearer for elegance and tradition at Audemars Piguet. This is the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak 15400 ST. This is the 2012 to present latest reference. The newer 41 millimeter stainless steel Royal Oak supersedes the old 15300 ST with its 39 millimeter case. This watch represents a bigger boulder, but unmistakably Royal Oak take on the Gerald Genta original. Now proportionally it doesn't read as different. Everything about the integrated case and tapering stainless steel bracelet, the octagonal bezel, the dial with its tapisserie waffle cut, it reads as the original Audemars Piguet Royal Oak. Now when you put it on the wrist and you scrutinize it, you can see the way the increased geography reads as a larger, cleaner dial, and that's where the extra acreage, so to speak, really pays dividends. Before I talk about how it fits on the wrist, I want to talk about that dial, because that is really the centerpiece of the watch, and it's the canvas on which Audemars Piguet has rendered its revisions. More than any other part of the 15400, it's the dial that has changed relative to its predecessor. Now, you could see that the indices are longer. They're bigger, they're longer, they're a little bit finer, and they have a more slender appearance because their aspect ratio has changed longer in relation to their thickness. Moreover, the index at 12, the double index, has supplanted the AP logo a little bit more discreet now. This watch doesn't require a whole lot of branding, so the applied AP logo has been lowered from the station at 12 o'clock to just below a new double index at 12. Nicely done. Now, the date disc, although it's a little bit more subtle on the silver dialed example, is now a corresponding monotone to match the dial itself, and you'll see the same on the blue dial watches. The date disc blends right in. It's there when you want it. It disappears when you don't. And moreover, you can see that there's now a little stub index at 3 o'clock as opposed to the exclusive date window as index on the previous reference. Now the tapisserie has changed just a little bit. It's just slightly finer, but it's just as detailed as ever. Now Swiss made at 6 o'clock, now split by the index at 6 rather than just below the index at 6. And I want to add one more note on that tapisserie dial. Being silver, this one has a more light-hearted look to it. It's a, it's a more summery watch, maybe even a little bit more versatile than the darker dialed examples. This is definitely one for getting outdoors in fair weather, and because it does have a little bit of a metallic glimmer to it, it plays spectacularly in sunlight in a way that the uh, more matte-finished blue and black tapisserie examples do not. So it's got that special feature to it that sets it apart from the traditional Royal Oaks. Moreover, this is one of the few watches whose dials really rewards high-powered loop viewing just as much as the case back, and this is a display case back, because the tapisserie waffle cut, now made in-house at Audemars Piguet since 2012, still turned on a vintage pantograph style device, has beautiful detail in between each of the ridges, each of the squares of that hobnail cut. Each channel has incredible gradation within it ridges, almost a sandblasted texture, but it's definitely got a texture. The detail is regular, it's fine, and when you examine this watch under the loop, you marvel at just what a fine level and regular level of repetitive pattern Audemars Piguet is able to achieve at such a small scale. This is a watch that's as fascinating to the loop enthusiast on the front as on the back, and I do want to call out the back. Now the watch features a 22 carat engraved winding rotor. Now the rotor itself is 22 carat rose gold engraved with the coats of arms of the Audemars and Piguet families. Still controlling the company to this day since 1875, Audemars Piguet is both independent and the oldest company still under the control and the guidance of the original founding families in the Swiss watch industry. The rotor spins on unlubricated ceramic rotor bearings, bidirectional winding so it doesn't have that awkward unidirectional wobble that you get on some systems. Because the ceramic bearings are unlubricated, they're very efficient, they roll easily. And because they're incredibly hard, they need no maintenance and they need no lubrication for long-term durability and reduced long-term servicing costs. I continue to rotate through to show you a full view of the movement and the full balance bridge featuring a Gyromax style balance wheel. It has the variable inertia balance blocks on its periphery, so fine adjustments are made thusly. 
Now the index itself is screwed down and fixed, so you get the benefits of a free sprung escapement, very shock resistant, especially when paired with the dual anchored full balance bridge. A full 60 hour power reserve, so in addition to automatic winding, this one has ample autonomy in between charge ups. If you were to put this watch down, say on a Friday afternoon and pick it up on Monday, if it were fully wound to start, it would still be ticking on Monday morning. But as I like to say, with a watch this much fun, this versatile, this beautiful, why would you ever put it down? Now, although Audemars Piguet is not part of the city or canton of Geneva, so it's not eligible for the Geneva seal, the standard of finish, everything from the polished screw heads to the gorgeous detailing of the ridges of the Côte de Genève, the camphored and beveled edges of all the bridges, the tight perlage pattern beneath the balance wheel, everything about this watch reads as fine as Geneva's best. After all, Audemars Piguet, along with Vacheron and Constant, Vacheron Constantin and Patek Philippe, is part of the original Swiss high horology, holy trinity, of fine finish, and for good reason. I'm going to end with an ergonomic note and just talk a little bit about that integrated royal oak bracelet because it's so important aesthetically and ergonomically. Now, my wrist is six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, and you can see the watch reads as a royal oak. Although it's 41 millimeters now compared to its 39 millimeter predecessor, I'm going to go out and say that Audemars Piguet was incredibly conscious of the fact that they didn't want to alienate clientele with an unwearably large watch. So the length of the lugs beyond the case has been tapered and paired to the point that I think you could say anyone who can wear the 39 can wear the 41 and probably not know the difference except perhaps when they look at the dial. Moreover, and as ever, the bracelet is beautifully finished. The hand camphering of the sides of the links is still mirror polished and beautiful. The tolerance between links is as fine as ever, never pinches skin, never pulls hair. A huge portion of the value of these watches is in the hand finish of that gorgeous octagonal bezel, the white gold bezel bolts, and the beautiful, again, hand finished, fully integrated bracelet. Gerald Genta being a jewelry designer, he designed it to read as a bracelet, not as a watch. And although the design was first seen in 1972 in Basel, today in 2015 at Watch You Want, I can tell you it looks as fresh as ever. You can see this fresh, remarkable, beautifully finished Audemars Piguet Royal Oak reference 15400ST, the latest reference on our website, Watch You Want.